I think of education as a feeding the soul. So soak up as much as learning as you can from this course to brighten your life and the lives of those around you. Now let me explain how I've structured the course. We'll begin with the basis, which is Agile, and think of Agile as the foundation, like the solid ground you build on. Then we'll delve into the specific part of Agile, called the Scrum Framework. It's akin to a specialized tool that helps us organize and manage things effectively. Once we are in Scrum, we will focus on its uh, guiding principles that keep us on the right track. So it's like a building a strong structure, which is Scrum, on a solid foundation, which is Agile. So using the right tools and principles for success. So that's the plan. So don't worry if you have never heard about Agile or Scrum before, I will explain everything from the ground up. Okay, now let's get right into it. You might be wondering what's the first about Agile and why are we talking about it in education. And I will explain that in a bit, but first let me share a story from my school days. So imagine this. I'm in Mr. Monotone's history class, struggling to stay awake. His voice is so dull that it feels like he's putting me to sleep. He talks on and on and on about some old battle, and I'm just trying not to doze off. And my close friend, if you see it's away, is already nodding off. <laughs> I cannot blame him. Mr. Monotones makes even most exciting history sound like a bedtime story. So I keep checking the clock, hoping time would go faster. And finally, the bell rings and we rush out like a prisoner succeeding captivity. So, my friend asked me, could that class be any more boring? He's got a point. Mr. Monotones knows how to make things dull. Walking to lunch, I start thinking about how to survive his lectures. Maybe bring a stress ball or turn his boring stories into adventure in my head. I needed all the tricks to make it through this year. And I told myself, if I ever become a teacher, I would say goodbye to boring lectures. And that's where Agile comes in. Agile is not just about project management. It's a way of making things dynamic, engaging, and most importantly, effective. Now, let's dive into the Agile values and principles and see how they can transform education, making it more exciting and fruitful for both teachers and students. Okay, And here is the fascinating perspective. Building a product successfully doesn't necessarily equate to building a successful product. So, in education, achieving a successful learning experience doesn't always happen through conventional teaching methods. It's about adding value and delivering something that truly resonates with the learner. Before Agile, the way people did things in the software industry was quite different. Everything was very strict. Um, there were fixed ways of doing things, a lot of paperwork and a big focus on rules and process instead of the final product. And this caused some problems. And development software took a long time, customers weren't getting what they wanted, and a lot of projects failed. And then when Agile Manifesto came, which changed the game. And I will talk about that in a moment. But it's important to understand how things were before. With all the strict rules and paperwork. Pretty much like the situation in the education industry today, right? <laughs> However, in 2001, a group of visionary software developers gathered to pioneer a shift in software development. And they created the Agile Manifesto. A simple framework built on four values and 12 principles designed to infuse agility into the software development process. 
And the Agile Manifesto is available here and I encourage you to go later after the lecture to go to visit this web address. But the, the magic of Agile didn't stop there. It didn't just change how we made software. It also changed other things like computers, cars, medical stuff, food, clothing, music, and so on and so forth. But most importantly, it allows the education industry to become alive. All right? If that's okay with you, now let's talk about these Agile values and principles. And after that, I will explain what I think Agile really means. Okay? In these Agile values and principles, they often mention the word software. But here's the cool part. Other industries, just like I mentioned, are switching it up to make sense for them. So we can change the software to something like lecture, like class, or whatever fits best for us. Well, it's easy, right? So let's begin with this in mind, okay? So, Agile values. First, individuals and interactions over process and tools. In the old days, everything was about following a set of processes. One example is the waterfall metal method, which has a strict step-by-step -step way of doing things. But you know what? Strict process cannot predict every problem that might come up. Real creativity comes from people being free to think and share ideas. That's why Agile thinks individuals and how they interact are super important. So in our course, you will get to see how awesome teamwork and sharing ideas can be. It's like a magic key that unlocks cool and creative teaching and learning strategies. Okay, Agile principle number two. Working software over comprehensive documents or documentation. If you remember, you can always change the word software with something more appropriate to you. Now let's talk about the documentation. It's like a lot of big chunk of project time. But you know, Agile thinks there's a better way. Instead of spending too much time on paperwork, it focuses on getting actual work done. So in our course, we are all about that. You will see a shift from lots of documentation to real-life applications. The idea is to bring quick value to your students. Number three, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. In the old way of doing things, customers were mainly involved at the start, during contract talks, and then at the very end of the project, and that led to lots of problems. It causes misunderstandings because the customer needs might change during the project and waiting until the end to get their inputs means that final product often didn't match what they really wanted. But Agile has a different idea. It wanted customers and collaborations to be involved all the time. So you as an educator play the customer role here. Your teamwork with your students is super important. And you'll figure out how to welcome these ideas and guides the teaching and learning journey in the best way. This ensures that what you provide really fits their needs. And the final Agile value is responding to change over following a plan. Agile likes being flexible. We being begin with a plan, but we are cool with changing it along the way. Plans cannot predict everything that might happen during a project. In education, just like in Agile, we see change as a good thing. It's not a problem. It's the chance to add more value. So in this course, you will see how awesome it is to adapt to change. This helps your teaching methods grow and match what your students really need. Okay? All right, so we just talked about four important things called Agile values. But guess, guess what? There are more. Their Agile manifesto also has 12 principles. So even though this may seem boring or too much theory, 
to some of you, let's dive into and see a closer look at these 12 Agile principles and this will help us understand how they can completely transform the way we approach education. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> principle number one. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. In the world of education, our customers are the students. Our top priority is to make sure they are happy by always giving them valuable learning experiences. To make this happen, we need to get feedback early on. Keep making things better and be ready to change if needed. It's all about making sure students get the best education possible. Principle number two, welcome changing requirements even late in the development. So we already talked about that. So agile process tell us it's okay to welcome changes to meet to the changing needs of students. So in education, this means we could ship, we could be flexible and quick to respond to what the student needs. It's like keeping our teaching plans updated. So the lessons stay interesting and useful for the students. And we will cover all these values and principles in more detail later in the course. But let's move to the principle number three. Deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with the preference for a shorter time scale. So in education, we want to provide students with the practical knowledge regularly. This means having a lots of quick checks short learning sessions and interest activities. It's like um, keeping the, the learning train moving so students get helpful insights often. Okay? Principle number four. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. And I strongly believe that to make a real impact, close collaboration between you, the teacher, and your students is super important. So having daily interactions between teachers and students create a learning environment where the, that learning journey is shared and clear and everyone is on the same page. It's like making sure everyone is working together smoothly towards the same educational goals. Principles number five, build projects around the motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support they need and to trust them to get the job done. So in ed education, we see motivation as a key to learning. We aim to create a setting that inspires students to be motivated and take control of their learning. The goal is to encourage them to be independent learners. Principles number six. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. If you are a teacher and want to explain a complex math concept, instead of just heading out a worksheet, you gather the students in the circle for a face-to-face -face discussion. You encourage them to ask questions share their thoughts and help each other understand the topic better. This direct interaction fosters better communication and understanding, making the learning experience more effective. Principle number seven. Working software is primary measure of progress. In the context of education, working software becomes the primary measure of progress. Rather than focusing solely on completing assignments, and exams successfully, we value the practical application of knowledge as a tangible sign of progress. Principle number eight, agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain constant pace indefinitely. So in education, we aim to sustainable and continuous learning the curriculum should support a steady pace of knowledge acquisition, preventing burnout and assuring that students can maintain a comfortable and consistent learning journey over time. And from st students' point of view, let's say you have a big assignment to do and the end of the, the semester. So instead of uh, waiting until the last minute and staying awake for the entire night to study for an exam, 
you set a sustainable pace of by working on it a bit each week. So this way you avoid stress and maintain a balanced lifestyle and achieve better results because you are constantly engaging with the material. It's like a, like taking a small allegro steps to reach your goal rather than sprinting old at the last moment. Principle number nine, continuous attention to teaching excellence and good design uh, enhances agility. In education, we believe in always making things better. Just like upgrading your favorite video game or getting the latest version of a cool app, we focus on improving how we teach and learn. By paying attention to better ways of teaching and creating engaging content, we keep things fresh and exciting in the world of education. For example, if you notice that your students really enjoy interactive activities in the classroom, to enhance your teaching, technical excellence, you decide to incorporate more hand-on projects and use new creative methods, good design. And this change keep your lesson engaging and help students learn better. It's like adding new features to make your teaching more enjoyable and effective. Just like updating a favorite app to make it even better. Principle number 10. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. So think of your school day like a backpack. You don't want to carry unnecessary things that makes it heavy, right? Simplicity in education is like having only what you really need in your backpack. The most important knowledge and skills. It makes learning easier and more enjoyable because you are not overwhelmed by unnecessary stuff. Keep it simple, just like having only the essential in your backpack. And from your student's perspective, if you have a big project for, for your school, so instead of adding lots of extra information that's not needed, you focus on the most important points. It's like making a clear and simple roadmap for your project. And this way, you don't waste time on things that won't help you succeed, making your work more efficient and effective. Okay? Keep things simple helps you achieve your goals without unnecessary stress and confusion. Just like creating a straightforward plan for your project, simplicity in education makes learning smoother and more enjoyable. Principle number 11. The best architectures, requirements and design emerge from self-organizing team. So in the world of education, we encourage students to work together in self-organizing groups. This means that they take charge of their own learning experience, collaborate with classmates, think critically and become more independent. And this approach leads to the best results in the education. It could be something like a group project where students are given the freedom to decide how to organize their work, assign tasks between themselves and solve problems together. So instead of teacher dictating every step, students take the lead, share ideas and make decisions collectively. This self-organizing teamwork not only fosters a sense of responsibility, but also brings out the best in each student leading to a more successful and enjoyable learning experience. And finally, we have a principle number 12. At regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective and tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. So let's consider our students preparing for an exam. Instead of urging them to cram all the information at the last minute, we can encourage them to take regular breaks to assess what's working and what's not in their study routine. This allows them to adjust their methods for better results. In education, we can easily promote this practice of regularly reviewing how students learn, tweaking their strategies, discussing what went, what went well and identify areas for improvement. And moreover, figuring out how to collaborate better helps the group become more effective, 
ensuring a smoother and more successful exam preparation. In education, just like in software development, self-assessment and adaptation can lead to improved learning outcomes over time. Now let's sum up. These Agile principles provide a transformative lens through which we can view education. By integrating these principles into our teaching methods, we create an educational environment that fosters adaptability, motivation and student-centric learning. And there you have it, the 12 principles that I've aimed to demonstrate to you through the lens of their application in education. So by incorporating these principles into our teaching methods, we can cultivate an educational environment that nurtures adaptability, motivation and student-centric learning. We are on our way to discover how Scrum in education can revolutionize our approach to teaching and learning. But before we wrap up this lecture, let me share my understanding of Agile. Or you can call it Agile definition. Agile is a project management approach that involves breaking the project into phases and emphasize continuous collaboration and improvement with the ability to respond to change. During upcoming lectures, you will hear me talk about Agile and Scrum. And just remember, they're not the same thing. They mean different stuff. The primary distinction between Scrum and Agile is that Agile is a project management style and Scrum is just one of several methods used to implement that style. Scrum being the most popular framework is our focus. Well, initially designed for project management, the principles of Agile have broader applications. Agile has not only revolutionized the software development industry, but also has found a place in various sectors, and I aspire to make a similar impact in the education industry. In the upcoming lectures, we will delve into the crucial significance of adapting Scrum in educational setting and explore how these practices can be the key to establishing high effective educational environment. And together, we'll uncover the existing potential that Scrum can bring to the world of education. I eagerly anticipate seeing you in the next lecture.